Today we're going to be talking about special pairs of angles. And there are some special pairs that I want you guys to know. Now the first one, complementary angles. Complementary angles, the definition, so underneath here I'm going to have the definition. It's going to be two angles whose sum is 90 degrees. So if we were to use the, the reason of two angles adding up to 90 in a proof, your reason would be definition of complementary angles. Supplementary angles, two angles whose sum is 180. So when two angles add up to 180, their sum is 180. That's by the definition of supplementary angles. And then linear pair, two adjacent angles whose uncommon sides are rays. What that means, I have two adjacent angles. Let's look at one and two. Angle one and two are adjacent angles. They share the same vertex and a common side but no common interior points. Therefore, since this is a line, angle one, and angle two are a linear pair. I'm gonna list all the other ones. Angles two and angle three. Angle three and angle four. Angle four and angle one. So all of those are all our sets of linear pairs. Now vertical angles. Vertical angles, the definition of vertical angles is two angles whose sides form two pairs of opposite rays. So think about it as X marks the spot. Two angles whose sides form two pairs of opposite rays. So I have angle two. Angle two here and angle four, those sides form opposite rays. So two and four are vertical angles. One and three are vertical angles. Okay, so that was our definition, but now we're gonna prove something about vertical angles. As always, we start with our given. First, we are given that angle one and angle three are vertical angles, and angle two and angle four are vertical angles. And that's our given. I'm trying to prove that two is equal to four. Okay, step two. One plus two, angle one plus angle two adds up to 180 degrees. Angle two plus angle three adds up to 180 degrees. And that's going to be by our angle addition postulate. Step three, since 180 equals 180, angle one plus angle two equals angle two plus angle three, and that's gonna be substitution. Now, if I subtract two from both sides, I get one equal to three. So I didn't think through my proof before I started. I need to adjust things a little bit. So I'm gonna adjust step two. So all I'm doing is erasing step two and step three. Okay, step two. I'm gonna say angle one angle two 
plus angle three. Two plus three equals 180. And three plus four. Because I have, I have to involve angle two in my, and four in my equation and have the common angle of angle three that I'm gonna subtract from both sides. So then we set our equations equal. Angle two plus angle three equals angle three plus angle four. Now you have to tell me what you're subtracting from both sides. So angle three equals angle three, and that's gonna be reflexive. And then I subtract three from both sides, so I get angle two equal to angle four. And that is by subtraction. So what have we proven here? We have proven, and I'm gonna write it in red, we've proven a theorem. If two angles are vertical, two and four are vertical angles, then they are congruent. So that's a new theorem. Our abbreviation for this in proofs is going to be all vertical angles are congruent. That's gonna be our reason now in proofs. Okay, next proof. And again, make sure you're writing down a given our proof in our picture. First step, always start with the given. And I have angle two congruent to angle three. Step two. First, before you move anywhere, all right, mark up your diagram. I have two equal to three. I'm trying to get one and four equal. What's the relationship between two and one? Well, they're vertical angles. What's the relationship between three and four? They're vertical angles. So I know now that angle one is congruent to angle two, and angle three is congruent to angle four, and that is by our theorem that we just wrote. You're never going to write vertical angles, definition of vertical angles. What you're gonna write is vertical angles are congruent. Step three. This is a good way to demonstrate our transitive property. I have two equal to three, but two is equal to one, and three is equal to four, so therefore, angle one is congruent to angle three, I'm sorry, angle one is congruent to angle four, by the transitive property. Okay, next. Solve for x and y, and I love these types of equations. All right, so you know that vertical angles are equal, so I know this angle here is equal to this angle here. But this angle here and that angle are supplementary, and they both have the same variable. So I can say that 3x minus 8 plus x equals 180, because this angle plus that angle adds up to 108. So I have 4x minus 8 equals 180, 4x equals 180, so x is gonna be equal to oh, 188. Okay, so then that means x is equal to 47. So then now let's figure out what 3x minus 8, what's the measure of that angle? Because that's equal to 2y minus 17. So I plug in 3 times 47 minus eight. And I get 133. 
Now I know that 2y minus 17 is equal to 133, so 2y is equal to 150, therefore y is equal to 75. Okay, next, solving for x and y. All right, there's a few equations we can write up. Notice how I have two variables. I might need to set up two equations. So if I set up one equation, 8x plus 3 halves y is equal to 2x plus 5y. So if I subtract the 2x over, I get 6x. If I subtract the 3 halves over, 3 halves minus 5, well that's going to be 7 halves y. If I solve for y, I get something like 12 over 7x. Whew, that's kind of hard to substitute in. Let's see if elimination might be easier. I'm going to erase just because I'm going to need a lot of board space. All right, now using elimination, I know that 2x plus 5y plus 106 is equal to 180. Therefore, 2x plus 5y is equal to 74. Similarly, I know that 8x plus 3 halves y is equal, I'm sorry, plus 106. So therefore, 8x plus 3 halves y is equal also to 74. I want to get rid of that fraction. So I'm going to multiply by the common denominator. So I have 16x plus 3y, make sure the 2 gets distributed to everybody, equals 148. Now we have two equations. We have one equation. We have another equation. Let's use elimination. Okay, so using elimination. Let's multiply the bottom equation by, actually no, let's multiply the top equation, I apologize. What was I thinking? Multiply the top equation by negative eight. So let's get rid of the x. Multiply by a negative eight. So I'm gonna leave the bottom equation alone. 16x plus three y equals 148. Multiplying the top equation by negative eight, I get negative 16x minus 40y equals negative 592. Now combine your two equations, add them together. Those cancel. I get negative 37y equals negative 444. I divide and I get y to be 12. Woo, good, I was hoping I didn't have a fraction. So I get y equal to 12. Now I need to solve for x. You can pick any of the equations. I'm gonna pick the 2x plus 5y one. So I have 2x plus five times 12 is equal to 74. Solving that, I get x equal to seven. So I solve for x, I solve for y. So yeah, I had to work with some pretty big numbers, had to get rid of a fraction, this is how you're going to be using algebra in geometry class.
Next one. The measurement of a supplement of an angle is... eight more than three times the measure of the angle. So, if we make x the angle, the supplement of an angle is 180 minus that angle, since they have to add up to 180. So the measure of the supplement of an angle, the measurement of the supplement of an angle. So 180 minus x is eight more than three times the measure of the angle. Eight more than three times x, which we've said is the measure of the angle. Add x over. Subtract 8 over. X is going to be equal to 43. We set X up as the measure of the angle. That's what we've solved for, so we are good. Okay, you have three lesson questions. I am going to give you a hint on number one. Number one. This one has some crazy fractions. Don't be worried about it. It's gonna be a fraction and I want it as an improper fraction. Okay, so improper fraction. Number two, you're writing an equation and three, you're solving the equation.